The building itself we bought in 2019, it was a vacant furniture store and we came up with the idea to put something on the outside of the building that would attract people to Route 66. So we wanted something that was going to be outstanding and we thought the Gigantar guitar sculpture would be it. The planning process was pretty lengthy. Not only did we have to find a concept of what we wanted to do, we had to find an artist that we needed to do it. We needed to deal with the city, and we are a historic landmark here in this building, and then we had to get a variance because the guitar is actually larger than what they allow on a building for a sign or for a sculpture. We chose Shannon McDonald because she's known as the world's greatest Beatles artist. She's done artwork for Cavern Club in Liverpool. She's done stuff at the Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Graceland. And also she's a musician. Her reputation preceded her. So the excitement around that was truly instrumental, pun on words, um, <laughs> to, to have her selected. It was truly perfect. So we just started kicking around some ideas and we came up with this large guitar uh, that was based on the look of our logo. Route 66 is kind of known as the kitschy Americana. And what is more popular than a 25-foot guitar? I know that Ron Romero wanted to dream of something that would be big, a landmark here in Illinois. There's so many other landmarks, and this would be just an attraction along Route 66. And when it came to fruition, it was, uh, it was like a dream come true. It's a 24-foot guitar. It's made of aluminum, every bit of it, except a couple things, maybe the pickups. It took quite a while. When I heard that Shannon was going to partner with PPG Paints, I knew how versatile you know, those paints would be and that they would last long. The sign was actually made in New Jersey and two of our board members traveled to New Jersey. They actually drove out there so that they could follow it back. So Tim Seaton and Andy Carey drove all the way out there. We started out here in Joliet. Halfway there, we stopped in Cleveland, and we stopped at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio. And then we ended up stopping in uh, Pennsylvania. I will say that when you spend that much time with somebody, you really get to know them, and I learn more about musical history in Illinois than I could ever imagine. Andy's just an incredible resource for trivia and, and music in Illinois. We had to go through a snowstorm. Kind of hit a mini blizzard at one point. We tried to get the trailer, which was an extra long trailer because the guitar's so big, getting into the parking lot at the hotel and the driver couldn't get in at first, so we had to help him and we were blocking traffic in this four lane road. You know, 10 o'clock at night, it just, it was kind of scary. So it was a wonderful journey. There was a kickoff there at a place called the Stone Pony, which is very well known because that's where Bruce Springsteen used to play all the time. We were very fortunate to have a couple of the guys from the Smithereens that actually kicked off the journey from New Jersey back to Illinois. Just as, as quick as we got to Springfield to pick up the guitar and meet there and actually come up, I was getting calls from TV shows and radio stations and newspapers and people said, we just found out about this, we want to do a story, do you have a moment? Every time we stopped at, people came out to see it, and, and every historic landmark on Route 66 that we stopped at had a, had a little bit of a crowd, you know, people were expecting us. In many of the areas, we had some of the mayors come out and speak with us and, and do photo ops. We got to meet a lot of the people who are true uh, Route 66 fans along the way, so it was really exciting to meet everybody, and and to share that uh, publicity with everybody along the way. We didn't have it laying out, you know, flat on the deck because it's too wide to go over the road because it's 12 feet wide. So we had to stand it up vertically. Well, the brackets, one of the brackets fell off and came loose and uh, the bolts that were holding it together were, uh, were missing. We had to uh, do a little mechanical engineering and, and Andy had that down. I was the shortest guy so I could never get up on the truck but I would hand them all the wrenches and the nuts and the, you know, the bolts. So we bought two nuts and one bolt and double nutted it. 
so it's a way to keep it tighter so that it can't come loose. So it was able to make the rest of the trip safely. When we stayed at these uh, hotels, we had parked Gigantor on the parking lot. I remember getting in the elevator one morning and all these little kids were all excited. And I said, hey, how you guys doing? I said, there's a huge guitar in the parking lot. We're gonna go down and look at it. Going into towns where we were met by the police and the police would give us an escort through the town and as we'd get to the next town they'd peel off and the next uh, town their police would pull in and give us the escort through their town. Just a lot of pride when we ended up at the Joliet prison and that was in the evening we had quite a uh, quite a presence of the police. It was, it was all good but there were a lot of squad cars. I've worked with Route 66 in the state of Illinois for quite some time to help promote so to have that drive past some of those truly iconic locations was, because it's never gonna be an opportunity again that they would be able to have Gigantar next to them, you know, to kind of say, okay, I'm here, move aside. <laughs> I'm stepping in. <laughs> Well, it seemed like it took forever, in, in so many words, it really did. So I know that it was a couple days of, of, you know, mounting it, and getting it prepared and so forth. So when the big night came, we knew that we'd have dozens of different dignitaries and celebrities and people that were here in support of the museum. And there were hundreds of people out in the street. And, and it was overwhelming, the helicopters, the press coverage, it was on six or seven different stations uh, here in Chicago, so it was very exciting. The largest handmade guitar sculpture ever created will soon light up downtown Joliet. A ceremony is set to begin at five tonight outside of the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum on Route 66. This 24-foot sculpture is nicknamed Gigantar <laughs> and will now be the museum's official icon. It was created in New Jersey and traveled across five states on an open flatbed truck to reach its final destination in Joliet. Tonight's ceremony will include an appearance from Cheap Tricks, Rick Nielsen. One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. That was Rick Nielsen of Cheap Trick helping to welcome the largest handmade guitar sculpture to Joliet. The 24 foot tall guitar known as the Gigantar arrived earlier today at the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum on Route 66. The guitar made its way here all the way from New Jersey. Ron Romero joins us live with what's happening in less than 20 minutes. So, Ron, the big deal here is the big guitar called Gigantar. Tell us about that. Oh, that was something that was made in New uh, Jersey by Shannon McDonald, who I believe is standing behind me right here. Uh, she's the artist that created the uh, what we're calling Gigantar. It's a 24-foot guitar that is now hung on the front of the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum in Joliet. We've got a few of, uh, actually, my idols here. Chuck Colbert on the side here is from American Breed. Next to him is Jim Peter from the Ides of March. Next to him is Carl Giamarese from the Buckinghams. Hey. Behind us here is Tom Garrett from uh, Classics 4. Carlo also from the Buckinghams. Larry Millis from the Ides of March. And of course, uh, Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick. All right. Hey. Wow. Whole house. Quite a group you got there. Good company. All right, so tell us a little bit more about what people can see inside the museum. The museum is something that we've been putting together for a few years now. We bought the building in 2019 here in Joliet. We've been renovating it. Uh, we've been busy doing that. So uh, we're looking to open at least the first floor by the spring of this year, if all goes well. What kind of place does Illinois have in rock and roll? Of course, we know the names, we know some of the bands, but what makes Illinois so special, Ron? There's just so much music here in Illinois that really hasn't been uh, recognized, it hasn't been celebrated uh, yet. So we, we kind of claim that here and uh, want to share with the rest of the world what great music we have from Illinois. We should. That's we great. absolutely should. Ron Romero, thank you so much, and good luck with tonight's opening. And Gigantar, I have to say, so is awesome. very impressive. I love it.
Hats off to the artist Thanks. there, Shannon. Thank you very much. We had a VIP room next door, Juliet's, that we had our rock stars meet. We had Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick. Jim Peterick from Eidsmarsh and Survivor was there. Chuck Colbert from American Breed. Carl Giamarese from the Buckinghams. Shannon herself is a, is a world famous Beatle artist and she had her people with her and you had different dignitaries from Joliet and from the surrounding area. It was a lot of excitement. You know, there's always those last minute things. And when you, when you throw a switch, and we had the coolest switch you've ever seen. Everyone had their, there is a, a, a photo out there on social media that everyone was holding their phones up in the air, waiting for this moment. And I had my fingers crossed that the switch was actually going to work. <laughs> because you just never know what might go wrong. I get a phone call in the middle, I'm standing there, and it's supposed to light up in about five minutes or whatever it was. And it's Ron Romero, and Ron's calling me. And I'm like, wow, what, what, what does he need, you know? So I answer the phone. He's like, do you know where the remote control is to turn on the lights? And I'm like, no, I don't know where it's at. <laughs> uh, okay, where's the light switch? So I had to cut through the crowd, and I'm running through the crowd to get up to the building. And we're looking around in the, you know, for this remote control. Someone had moved it from the, uh, the PA system. We had it up right there on the PA, and someone grabbed it. And, so we finally found it just in time. So when Rick Nielsen flipped the switch, that we had the remote to turn it on. When uh, Rick Nielsen flipped that switch, uh, it was it was a, it was an amazing moment. It just brought the museum to life, as well as downtown Joliet. But everything went on without a hitch, and that moment of wow, it. It's there, it's there. <laughs> and by the time it was time to go down and do the press and do the, do the actual event, there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people outside. Uh, we noticed that there were a couple of news helicopters that were overhead. Uh, you see things like that and it's so surreal. Should we give them a countdown? Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three. Gigantor, the whole coming to fruition and on the outside wall and all its colorful, you know, it's be beautiful stuff. What's your history stuff. with this man and, here and, and his guitar? This guy here is has been a friend of mine since 1978 and he wow. has been integral on getting my artwork out there. I've done his guitars, I've done Aerosmith stuff, all kinds of, and it's all because of him and that's why I wanted him. <laughs> That's why I wanted him here to help me to light the sky up with Gigantar. Well, thank you, Shannon. You're welcome, Red. She's great. That's all you need to know. It was so surreal to see that many people there for something that was a concept, maybe we'll do this on the front of the building, that traveled that far, and now we're doing this press release with music heroes from Illinois standing right beside us. It was just such a surreal event. Everyone was so welcoming and so excited to see this really, you know, um, finally take place. So it was just, hey, we're doing it. You know, it's, it's there, you know, we've got all the, this hype that's going on. We're on our way. There's a lot of people involved. There's over 21 board members, there's 10 historians, there's a lot of uh, committees, there are a lot of people who donate uh, their time and their funds to this project. As of today, we have over 850 charter members before we open up the doors from uh, 35 different states that support this mission and support what we're doing here at the museum. So there's a lot of people involved, and, and I want to say thank you to all of them, and I'm very thankful. One. Two, three!